Hey everybody, today I'm gonna to show you how to emphasize different things on your storyline page when you hover your mouse over to have it kind of animate in and when you move your mouse out to have it animate out. And we're gonna use the GreenSock library, the GSTAP library in order to accomplish this. I do have a lot of previous examples on how to do something like this, but this code that I'm gonna show you is going to simplify things more than what I've had in the past. My name is Jeff Bat with LearningDojo.Ninja. Let's go ahead and dive in here. If you wanna follow along, you can head on over to LearningDojo.Ninja slash JavaScript dash snippets. And when you come here, you can actually download the same project file that I'm going to be working with. And then you can jump down to 1.10 in order to follow along. Now this code that you're seeing here is the old code. You had to apply this in several different areas. In order to know exactly what's going on, let's go ahead and just kind of show you what's happening here. These three different cards that I have on my screen, when I move my mouse over, it's going to animate in, and when I move my mouse out, it's going to animate back to its regular spot. So what we could do is we could add triggers that will target those objects, and then we can animate, scale it up, and then we have to know when the mouse moves out in order to scale it down. Unfortunately, Storyline does not have a way to detect when a mouse moves out of an object. I really wish, I'm not sure why it doesn't have these events. I really wish that Storyline had that event. It would make life a whole lot easier if they just added a mouse out event or something like that. But fortunately, knowing a little bit of JavaScript code, we can add on our own mouse out without having to worry about it. We could also simplify the code instead of having to apply triggers to every single one of these cards, we could simplify the code and just add it in one spot. So let's go ahead and talk about that. I'm gonna dive in and show you exactly what's happening here. Now in this first code, that's where we have the animation coming in. I'm not gonna to touch that, that's gonna stay the same. You can go ahead and leave that as is. So you can just copy and paste that code. But on each of these, what we have to do is add our own JavaScript trigger. In that JavaScript trigger, we're basically targeting that feature one, and we're grabbing the data model ID. This is a way to identify objects on the stage. With JavaScript, it's usually a separate file, and so it has to have a way to be able to identify, and that's a key word there, identify what object on the stage or on the page are we talking to. Storyline has a data model ID that we can take advantage of for each of its objects, including groups. And so we could target these groups and we can say, hey, this is the ID. Now, if you're not familiar, I'll link a video at the end of this video for you to check out how to target that. But just as a quick overview, again, if you wanna dive into that more, I'll link the video at the end. If you go into preview mode with this page, what you can do is click on inspect and move this over to the side. Now there's this little arrow icon that if you click on that arrow icon, you can then just click on any object on the stage. Now it will target all the way down to that object, that shape, that pathway. We don't want all of that. We wanna move up a couple levels in order to get to the group. What we need to do is with that object selected is just kind of move our mouse over until we don't see that blue highlight anymore. And I think we're gonna to get to it right about here. See right here where it says slide object, slide object, object group shown as well. And then it has a data model ID. Well, if I go ahead and just expand that or just collapse that, if I hover over all these slide objects, it's gonna be my groups essentially. Now on each of those groups, here is the attribute. HTMLs have attributes of IDs or of classes or other things in order for us to talk to them through CSS or JavaScript. And this is how Storyline does it. So we have this data model ID. I can just copy and paste the ID for all three of these. I've already done that. You don't need to worry about that for this example, but if you're applying this code to your own project, you will need to figure out the IDs for your own project. All right, so let's go ahead and close that out. You can see that I've done that for all three of them, but what happens when I move my mouse out? Well, I kind of had to hack it a little bit and I added this shape that looks identical to the background. If I move that off to the side, that's the way that I got it to like when they hover over that, then to return all of the objects back to its normal code. And what I had to do there is I had to target all three of them and then move back all three of them just in case I was over here and moved out or over here and moved out. 
it wouldn't know which one that I hovered out. It's just going to move all of them back. And if they're already there, they're not going to move, but the ones that were scaled up will move back to its normal spot there. That's what that's doing. I'm going to simplify this and we're going to take some code and we're going to add one trigger in order to make it grow and to make it go back. And here is the trigger. So I have the same project file that you can download off of this website and I'll update this code by the time this video gets published. But if you come into here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that shape. I already did that here, that shape down at the bottom. I don't need that. I just want to simplify things here. And what I need to do is add a trigger when the timeline starts. So I already have, because I've used this already, an execute JavaScript trigger there. And then I just select that box and I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste in the code. Now, for those of you who are not coders, I'm going to show you where to change those IDs. If you want to tune out after that, that's fine. Or just end the video at that point. I know some of you get overwhelmed with code. So if you just want to leave it be there, that's fine. For those of you who want to understand what's going on, I'll go ahead and break it down at that point. All right, so the first thing, and if you're not a coder, you at least need to know where to change those IDs. I talked to you a little bit about where to grab the IDs, but this is where inside of these quotes, let me delete that, inside of those quotes, you basically copy and paste in that model ID for whatever object you want to have this animation when they mouse over or mouse out. So keep that in mind. I'm going to hit control Z to go back. I do that for all three objects. Now, if I'm only targeting two objects, I can get rid, don't get rid of this quote here. JavaScript is very picky that way, but get rid of all of that, except for all the way to the comma there, right about there. I can hit delete. And now I'm just targeting two items. Or if I'm going to add a fourth one, what I could do is copy that instead and come back in here and right before that quote, I can just go ahead and hit control V and change out that ID for a new object. That's all you have to do. If you're going to add objects or if you're going to remove objects, you just have to update that one thing. Now what's happening here, it's creating an array called features. What it's then going to do is it's going to find all of the query or the attributes with this ID that we're going to give it. It's going to find all of them. And it's going to create it inside of this array, which an array in code is basically just a list of data, a list of information. So everything that it finds here, it's going to query select all of them. It's going to create this array. Now with it being an array, we can go ahead and loop and we can go through all of those objects and we can apply this event listener. This code would be a lot more if I did not use something called loops. If you don't want to dive into the code, you can go ahead and end the video at this point, or you can jump to the end using the chapters. For those of you who want to dive in, I'm going to break down what I'm doing here. I could actually come in here and add an event listener with this highlighted text. I don't have to do this loop where you see like for each, I could just have an event listener for each of the objects and just identify each of those objects. But the nice thing about putting it inside of a loop is if I ever need to animate this differently or change this value, I just change it in one spot and it will happen to all three or four or whatever objects that I'm targeting here. That is one of the benefits about keeping it inside of a loop. What it's going to do is it's going to add this event listener, these events. We use events inside a storyline. That's where that when section happens in your triggers. When this happens, that is so key when you're working with programming is that when and the events. And that's exactly what we're doing through this custom code is we're adding on an event. Well, what type of events are we adding on? Well, that is this mouse over whenever we mouse over this object. That's basically a hover. When we hover over that object, it's going to trigger this code, which is a simple GSAP green sock animation to scale up by 0.6 with this easing. That's all that we're doing. So then we just need to do the opposite in order to, and we can have as many event listeners as we want to on an object. What we need to do is basically loop again and just add on the mouse out event. Really the only difference here, there's only two differences. I really just copied that code, pasted it down here, and I changed instead of mouse over to mouse out. So now we can add on our own custom mouse out. So even if you just wanted to add on an event listener, if you target that object and just do a mouse out event listener, 
you don't have to wait for Storyline to come up with that trigger. You could just do this, add some custom code. But that's what we're doing here. And what we're doing for each of those is when you move your mouse out of that object, it's going to animate back to one, its normal size. That's it. Now we have triggers for all three of those. And let's go ahead and preview that real quick. So I'm gonna do this when the timeline starts, just so the code is there. And once the code is there, the event listener will happen at any point. I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And then I'm gonna just preview this slide here. And then now I don't have to have anything here listening for an event. I just hover that over, move my mouse out, and I got that event. Even if you're not doing green sock, you're doing something else, or you're going to add a variable or do something like that, you can use these custom mouse over and mouse out events in order to really get what you want. Just so you understand here, we are looping through each of them. We're adding on this event listener of mouse out, and then we're running this function, which is basically the green sock code. And then we're doing the exact same thing, is we're then looping through each of these up here, and then we're adding on an event listener called mouse out that's gonna run this code whenever that event happens. That is pretty much it. With that knowledge, you can do a whole lot. So I'm gonna play around with this more. If you wanna check out more, make sure that you hit the like and subscribe button on my channel, as well as the bell notification so you get notified of all future videos as they come out. That really helps my channel, allows my channel to continue to grow, and allows me to create these videos for you. My goal for this channel is to help you become the best learning developer that you can be in order to create more interactive and engaging learning. You can also check out previous blog posts by heading on over to my website at learningdojo.ninja. If you click on the blog post section here, it has all of my previous blog posts, anything learning development related. You can also download free templates as well as check out full courses covering everything from A to Z in Articulate Storyline 360, Adobe Captivate, XAPI Fundamentals, Camtasia, Articulate Rise, Custom SCORM, and HTML5 video. Also, if you head on over to my YouTube channel below the video, you can also check out some of this gear that I have on. So you can check out both hoodies as well as shirts. And then I'm working on some other apparel as well. So make sure you check that out if you wanna like rep the Learning Dojo logo there. Or even I'm gonna come up with different phrases. If you have anything in mind, feel free to make a comment down below. Or if you have any other suggestions of like, hey, I wanna, I'm trying to do this in my video, go ahead and comment down below as well. Well, that's all I have for today. So thanks everyone, and I'll see you next time.